start world. So, so we've got we got some pretty good options here. Um, unbelievable that we have a double double button action. I guess it's single fire button, twin fire button. I don't know if that's actually mapped to. Uh, I guess we can try it out. Actually, that might mess with the WHD load patch. So we want tile sequence on. So you can choose between music and sound effects. We'll go with music. Uh, don't know why we wouldn't give ourselves three credits. Yeah, that's that's, that's the Gamble Train's route, Paul. Absolutely. All right. How's it going, Amiga Bong? Go west to the cave and collect the teleport key, then travel east to the teleport. Got it. Oh, shoot. Okay, that's all right. So controls were not are not as bad as I feared they would be. Um, I think one mistake that European platformers constantly make is the idea that your character needs to be <clears throat> almost exactly halfway up the screen, and. Um, it, what it does is it, it limits your field of view quite a bit versus putting your, your character about two-thirds of the way down the screen. Um, and that lets you let, lets you just see more of what's around you. It has nothing to do with your sprite size or anything like that. Let's see. Oh. Oh, I did it again. Yeah, and of course, um, yeah, the, the the whole concept of manual camera control. I just don't. I don't know if that if that had 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 crossed the the ocean yet. You know, that was something that was sort of developed in Japan, and um, it might have just not not been discovered yet. You know, instead of just keeping your character right in the dead middle of the screen and then moving everything or else around your character. So Korea still hasn't cl closed its borders, Amiga Bong. That's surprising. So they put this guy here. You can't... Let's see if we can kill him. Okay, so he can kill us, but we can't kill him. Um, can we drop down here and kill him? So one of the things that I always like to look at when I'm looking at platformers is like... What were the design decisions that were made, and um, and why were they made? So, like, take for example this guy right here. Okay, um, you can kill him by going out of your way, coming around, coming back up, and jumping up and swinging your sword. Um, but why would you do that? You know, what is the purpose of having this enemy here? Um, I was watching a video about this game uh, from the guy that, that designed it, and it uh, appears that all of the backgrounds were done in seven colors, which is uh, pretty impressive. I mean, this looks like, you know, the, graphically, this looks just as good as any any console game at the time. 1991, still early on in the days of the 16-bit consoles, 
and the Amiga still held the advantage, really. Alright. Now it's time to figure out what we're supposed to do. But the controls are fine. I mean, I, I'm having no problems negotiating things. Uh, that probably didn't do me any good because I think I was already at full health. I like the way your guy's armor transforms when he um, when he loses health. Yeah, it just has to do with the limitations of the system. Um, it's like you can have one or the other. You can have a really colorful um, character and enemy set and drab backgrounds or the other way around. But again, you know, this is a OCS ECS game, I'm pretty sure. And so, I mean, it looks pretty darn good. I think that's where we started. I'm supposed to get the key. I don't know where the key is. Uh, if you haven't seen it, Amiga Bong, there's, um, the coder actually does a whole video on this game. And it's a very short video, it's only like seven minutes long. And, um, yeah, I, I really disagree with that, that enemy placement. I just... It, it's, it's needlessly frustrating to place an enemy like that. I also don't like the way that they respond either. Or, respawn. Well, we didn't get too far on our first game. Oh yeah, and of course, um, Traverse Tales went on to much acclaim and riches uh, developing the, uh, the LEGO games. There is a password we can type in. I'm not sure when we're supposed to type it in, because there's not really a password entry screen. Um, says, enter LTUS's password for unlimited lives. But I'm not sure where we're supposed to do that. Let's try going back to the beginning. Oh, I bet it's, um, I, I bet it's at the, the level, the level code screen. That makes sense. So, we will not continue. That's a neat effect there. Very impressive with the balls. I'm just looking at the, I'm looking on Lemon here. It says, um, okay, LTUS, we'll start with that. So the, I'm playing the WHG load version, Amiga Bung, and it has two button support patched in. So I don't need to uh, mess around with the uh, 
Although it is nice. This obviously developed for a, a console in mind um, with the two button support. Um, I guess Traveler's Tales did one of the Mickey games. Maybe it was uh, Mickey's Castle of Illusion. Is that right, Amiga Bong? Oh, jeez. I really wish you could drop through the platforms, you know, like you can on, on other types of games. At least you can, you know, you start right back from where you made your last jump. So that's a that's definitely a good feature, especially when you've got unlimited lives. <laughs> because I have a feeling I'm gonna, man, this is the way that you do it. I know that I've done this before. Ugh. There we go. Music is nice. I mean, it's um, it doesn't get on your nerves. It's like a fully formed tune. Is that a door? It is. So you push down to go through the doors. Here's the key, I think. Dodge the bullet there. Hey, Bill. Yeah, and this is my first time playing it. Uh, it's it's actually pretty good. Actually, pretty good. Um, have you played this one a lot, Bill? Yeah, we're doing okay, you know, um, West Virginia, we're finally, um, you know, our, uh, our deserved reputation for being both a cultural and economic backwater is finally paying off, because nobody comes in and nobody goes out, so uh, things are not as bad as they are in other places, but things are going to get worse before they get better, just like ugh, everywhere. How are you guys doing up in the... Uh, up in upstate New York. Actually, you're not really upstate New York. You're pretty close to the city. But. Yeah. I, I mean, I was watching uh, Cuomo talk yesterday. And um, it's clear that he's frustrated um, with the federal government's response. And uh, understandably so. It's just... Uh, it's, it's an awful thing. Speaking of frustrating, um, oh, okay, actually, I remember what I'm supposed to do now. I take it all back. I think I'm supposed to take this back to the gate where I came out of at the very, very beginning, which should be just right around here somewhere. Yep, right here.
Um, I read, Bill, that they were thinking about closing the city to uh, car traffic and just opening it up to pedestrians. That's, that's insane. Um, I guess to allow people to be able to distance themselves more as they're, they're getting around. Of course, I guess if everybody's on lockdown, there shouldn't be that many people that are trying to get around anyway, right? Yeah, I, I, was, um, I was watching, I got the idea from another stream. I was watching this guy called Big John. And uh, he actually plays slots during his stream. Um, and for like real money. And it gives people something else to look at, you know, when the game is, is you're going through a weird period or whatever. Um, can I just keep on keeping on? No, I can't. Um, so I guess I use that, that cart to jump up there. Oh, I hope he comes back again. Um, but anyway, um, I was like, well, I don't want to gamble live on my stream. I just, <laughs> this is not my scene. But I, I, you know, it would be cool to show something to, to you know, uh, for people to look at besides uh, the game or my ugly mug. So uh, I just found this train footage of, uh, this is going from Osaka to somewhere else in Japan. And uh, put it on there. Oh man, I couldn't have played that any worse. I guess this is a, these bricks fall down in random patterns. One thing that's great, and I will talk about this on the show, is that when you die, you start immediately from where you die. That is, you can't you can't undersell that. That's a great feature. And of course, having the old unlimited life code on makes it much easier to get through this section. I guess what you'd have to do. I'm not sure how you'd actually time these jumps out. I guess if you stand on the very, very edge. Let's see if this is a space spot. Oh, me too, Bill. If I had the space, I'd be running a, a model train somewhere in my house. Uh, I love riding on trains. I'm a big train guy. It's a shame that the mass transit system in my part of the country is so poor. I'm sure up in New York, the more urban areas, the uh, mass transit system is great. But uh, in West Virginia, we've got the Amtrak and it is so slow and it r never runs on time. They always run out of food. It's no good. Okay, what do you suppose we do here? <laughs> Anybody have any ideas? So I just let these bricks fall, or these boulders fall on us over and over again. Surely I didn't climb this thing for nothing, right? You think I can jump off this way? Oh, I can. Okay, so I've got the, uh, the key to get out of here, so... And maybe the, um... Maybe the gate's over here. Goblin guy. Goblin archer. Oh man. North by Northwest is freaking fantastic. That's a great film. Um, yeah, I, I will take you up on that for sure, Bill, once all this is over. Um, this summer, uh, Eep and I were planning on going to Thailand, but um, obviously, because of everything, we are probably not going to be going. But if things should abate, you know, by July or so, uh, I would love to take a trip up there and, and see you. Oh man, that's what I need. I definitely need to see all of your all of your systems set up. I was watching your uh, your video toaster thing. Um, you've got to be the only person that is doing this that, that kind of footage. You know, um, filming the stuff on the video toaster and putting it out. It's so cool. Um, I w did. Do you know why 
the um, was there ever a video toaster that was put out on anything else other than an Amiga? Was there ever a PC version? Or was it always an Amiga product only? And did they live and die with the Amiga pretty much? Hmm. I wonder what we do here. This is... You know that a perennial complaint of mine about a lot of platformers and this is not just on the Amiga I don't mean to turn this into like an Amiga platformer suck thing this is like a lot of platformers on all systems but anytime you've just got blind jumps and you're not sure where to go it takes you out of the experience now that thing was not there at first like I stood there for a while and I must have not been going far enough far enough uh, right to trigger it Really? I had no idea that the TriCaster was the successor to the toaster. Huh. Well, that makes sense because the TriCaster, that's like, if I ever hit the big time and uh, we expand our podcast out into a Leo Laporte style uh, network, the TriCaster will be number one on my list. The Mac was really just controlling an Amiga? How did that work, Bill? So you had to have both an Amiga and a Mac and the video toaster all at once? Or was the, did the Mac do the graphics and then the Amiga was handling the, the, the key gen? Thanks for the host, Picard. Oh, jeez. Oh, man. You know, there are supposed to be special weapons in this game, but I've not found any yet. I've picked up a lot of stuff. Got lots of coins. I don't know if there's going to be a shop later on where I can buy some things. Here's the end of the level. Um, back when I was really thinking about expanding our video coverage for the podcast, which in retrospect would have been a horrible idea and we would have lost all kinds of money. Um, but I was thinking about getting, is it, is it SDI, Bill? Is that the, uh, the connection that a lot of the TriCasters use? You want to have a camcorders with SDI connections? Yeah, um, and so it was like not only would I have to buy the TriCaster, but then I'd have to buy a bunch of cameras, and um, and then we'd actually have to hire a producer too, because <laughs> I don't think I'd be able to do the show and push all the buttons and make sure everything was okay. So it, it turned into this huge rabbit hole, and really even for Leo, if you listen to him talk, um, you know they they spent a lot of money on video equipment too, and. Um, you know, he never comes out and says it, but you can kind of read between the lines that they didn't exactly reap a mega financial benefit versus just, you know, having a couple different uh, you know, cameras set up, you know, normal normal cameras. And because uh, when, when, when you're a talk network, you don't really need to have tons of professional, um, you know, type gear. I guess Giant Bomb uh, is an exception because when they do... They have a bunch of different styles to set up and stuff like that. So they, they probably have gotten their money's worth out of their video equipment. These dogs are weird. I'm never sure if I'm hitting them. You, uh, one of the things that is weird about this game is that you can duck, but you can't duck and, um, and swing your sword, which is very odd. Let's, here's one of these dogs. Yeah. The, the hit detection is sometimes just a little bit weird. It's like I have to wait until the middle of the dog is over my sword before it triggers. Oh, that's a one hit kill from that guy. Hey, 
A G A A J A S D I U S P three capture. Yeah. Hey. Uh. Hey. Forty eight K RAM. Can you um. Can you link me to one of those AG, AJA SDI to USB 3 capture devices? I've never seen one of those before. I wonder if that's the gate where the gate is after I find the key. Oh. It's another pet peeve putting ledges up that are just barely not big enough for you to make. Now, maybe you get a... See, it's like I, I destroyed that barrel. I was expecting it to fall, but maybe there's a hidden ledge there, or maybe there is a ledge and I just didn't see it. Let's try going back and checking it out. I've never heard of them before. Take a look at this link real quick. So this is a um, a one in one out. Um. Hmm. Interesting. Ah, Jay. That's probably how how it is. Um, I just got a um. It's just off camera, actually, right here. I just got a, a listener, Mr. Rushi, just sent me an HD sixty S. Uh, Elgato capture card and it has of course HDMI out so I was thinking about um, trying to run a um, my uh, 5D Mark II through it and seeing what the video quality was like versus using the EOS software um, that, that comes with a camera and it's it's a really sort of bootstrapped way to get to get a, a signal out for streaming. Of course, the 5D Mark II was not a, ever developed for for streaming. They, they hadn't. In fact, I'm sure Canon doesn't didn't want you to stream. So that's the gate. I really wish there was a map. What if I hit M? Oh, M turns off the music. <laughs> What is, um, how are you hooking that up? Or what do you, um, what do you, what do you, are you just, is it just through HDMI? Man, those dogs are just. No good. So I think that's where I actually started this level. The 5D Mark II has composite out? Oh yeah, I see that. So you've got, um, it's the multi-out, right? So it's, it looks like a headphone jack, but it can do uh, red, white, and yellow. Is that what you're looking at, Bill? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
So you, do you get a better um, a better picture out of that than you would going with the mini HDMI out through HDMI? I guess the TriCaster probably doesn't do HDMI in, so you're... you're... See, that was that, that chest that I just destroyed. I guess the answer is to be found down in the depths here. Maybe I missed something last time I came down here. Oh, I'm sorry. For when you said toaster, I was thinking I was still thinking tricaster. Yeah, so that's probably the best possible picture that you can get. Um, you know, uh, composite. So yeah, yeah. Man, this is straight out of Lionheart right here. Aaron's gonna love that. This game reminds me of a better controlling, better playing, better sounding, better looking Lionheart. Other than those things, it's exactly the same. Actually, these enemies, exactly like Lionheart because they're set up so poorly that you can't damage them. It's like, how I know you can kill those things because I just killed one. Where'd he go? I guess he won't respawn. Can I jump him? Yeah, it's a weird thing. It's like you have to let him start gnawing on your ankle before you can hit him with the sword. So it's almost like you're forced to take damage there. another blind not blind jump but dead end okay I wonder what the purpose of that was let's make sure there's nothing hidden over here These things are just, it's a weird enemy. So this is how you defeat it. You have to wait. Oh no, see that time, that time I was able to, to kill it without it touching me. This is sort of inconsistent, I guess. The Aja, Aja Kuna. Oh man, it's it's like why do you why do you make it seem like you can almost do it? There's, do you think that there's a jump power up? I still haven't seen any different weapons or any. Oh, and I mean we're getting pretty far through here. Where are you at, 48k Ram?
See, that time, like, I was swinging the sword just as hard as before. Yeah. These... I think this is taking me back to the dead end. And it is. It's like Castlevania. Just kind of kneel here for a while. Central Virginia. Okay. Um, I used to live in Virginia proper. Over in the Hampton Roads area. A couple years. Earlier on in my teaching career. It's been... Jeez, it's been almost 20 years now. Um, is Charlottesville near Richmond? How close is that to Richmond? I know Charlottesville is where the University of Virginia is, right? Of course, that's where all the stuff went down. That's probably not exactly the best PR for your area. Our rest of Richmond. Man, I really want to see what's in that thing. How do I reach it? Let's look at the cheats. Is there anything that I'm missing here? Yeah, I hate that for you guys. Okay, press 8 to pause gameplay. Press F6, then press fire to advance to the next level. Press F2 through F7 to select various super weapons. Okay, well we don't want to advance to the next level. We'll try F8. And then F2. And F8 again. Okay, I didn't do anything. Let's try F8. F3, F8. No. Alright, I don't know what these various super weapons are. But. Does anybody recall, you know, power ups in this game as far as offensive power ups? It just seems like um, if I was going to hit them, I would have hit them by now. So what has everybody been doing? Uh, Self-isolating. Anybody been watching anything cool? Or uh, playing anything neat that they wouldn't or normally play? I found myself watching a lot of sumo. Um, the sumo world champion, or not world championships, but the uh, big Japan uh, sumo championships are going on right now. And... Uh, they're still having them in empty arenas, and so uh, I don't know. I usually, when I feel real anxious, uh, sports is the first place I turn, and uh, not having sports is weird. Yeah, Bill, I'm sure you've got so many projects you can be working on. Uh, all your guru meditation stuff, you can, you can, you can self isolate till the cows come home and never run out of stuff to do. That's awesome, Paul. I actually forgot that <laughs> this was the part of the stage that... See, it just seems like you should be able to go into that building. Why did they make this building and make you not be able to go into it? <sighs> Frustrating. Hey, Rushi! What's your job, 48K?
Wait a minute. I seem to remember this is where we should go. No. I think it's the next one down. So we just drop straight down. What? I could have sworn that the gate was in one of these little alcoves. Is there a third place to drop down? There is. And here we go. Oh, retrieved the silver bow. I wonder if I'll get to use the silver bow. What does VIR stand for? Man. Yeah. Collision detection is not not fantastic. Oh, okay. Virginia International Raceway, right? Oh, that's cool, 48K RAM. Is your uh, Twitch channel 48K RAM? Is it the same as your name? I guess it is, it has to be, right? I need to follow you so I can watch that. That was not good. I wonder if I can, you think I can hitch a ride on one of these things? If I kill it? Oh man. Oh yeah, I love those tin line competitions. That, that's like some of my most favorite stuff in the retro world is seeing, I always love seeing like, what is the, what is the thing that can, um, what can you do with the hardware you have? Um, and you know, 10 lines of basic is like you're stripping everything down to its bare essentials. And of course you're definitely using a lot of tricks before I go in there yeah. um, to get the most out of those 10 lines. But uh, that's why I love seeing all these new Amiga projects that run on ECS OCS Amigas rather than, you know, vampire uh, enhance or you, you got to have an 060 or something like that. I'd much rather see um, something that you can run on a, on a stock 500 with maybe one mega RAM. Oh, so close, so close. Okay, try again. Man, gosh. Can I just jump from here and make it? Yes. <laughs> just bypass that altogether. You know, you pick up a lot of things in this game, but I don't know how you use them or if they do anything. See, I've got bombs. It says seven bombs. I wonder if that... Oh, okay. I don't know. So down and button. Um, I guess that's like a um, a smart bomb. Let's try it out with some actual enemies on screen.
you know, having the fixtures here, you can see like the eye of the chains and that does let you know where you can drop. So they're not completely blind jumps. That's one of these sections. Here's the bow. Can you use the bow? Heck no. Boy, and you get nothing either. Like if you charge it up to where it's like 99%, it's not good enough. You've got to go a full money. Do you remember what you programmed, Bill? I, uh, all of my programming was uh, not programming at all. It was just copying stuff out of magazines. I never was able to, um, I don't, I, I guess I just don't have the right mind for, for programming as much as I wanted to be a, uh, a programmer, a video game designer. I think. Yeah, maybe I just don't have them yet. Because even though we've played for, you know, almost an hour, um, there's a... Uh, I'm still, I still haven't completed the first world yet. I'm on level 1-3 right now. I haven't played the Genesis version uh, yet, Rushi. I don't know. I'm after the ring. Collision detection is the is the sore spot in this game. Why they did not why you can't duck and fire at the same time. I'm uh, following the programmer of this game on Twitter. I'm gonna reach out to him and see if we can do an interview um, to coincide with the show. Um, and I'll ask him about that. If we can if that should should come to pass. Yeah, Game Hut. I couldn't think of that. I've mentioned those videos uh, earlier on the stream, Rushi, and I, I couldn't remember the name of the channel. Game Hut is the, the programmer of Leander as well as many other games. Look at this guy. His whole existence is hanging out on this floating platform, swinging his axe at intervals. I got the ring. challenge is going to be figuring out how to get out of here. Can I fly on this thing? Like, no. I guess it when it's at its peak, if I jump, no, they, they don't line up. See, that time they did, I get, okay, as it's swinging up is when I need to, okay. 
I think I know what I need to do. Man, that could have got hairy. If I can destroy these, no. Sword of Lana. What's the uh what's Sword of Lana all about, Rushi? I guess those things kill you. And I guess the ground kills you? Okay. Oh, it's funny you mention that, because I think this game is a lot like Lionheart for the Amiga, except it controls way better. The only thing Lionheart has on this is uh, the soundtrack. The Lionheart soundtrack is great. Don't mind me, I'm just following this barrel. It's rolling at the exact speed that I walk. Ah. Yeah, it's very, very impressive. This is a game I couldn't imagine controlling with a joystick. It would be, it would be like heck on earth. It's definitely, it's got a different style. This one is a lot more cartoony. Lionheart, which is a weird thing to say that, that a game that features a, you as a uh, anthropomorph, is a human looking lion is uh, less cartoony. But um, this is this is definitely a lot more I don't know Japanesey. I think a lot more trickery was done with Lionheart to get all of the different shades. I I think that the Lionheart colors, like the all of the gradients in the background and stuff. It's impressive what they were able to do, but it looks a little bit gaudy. Um, and then when you contrast that against the single colored, a lot of the single colored enemies and things, um, it's a it's a big it's a big contrast. Hey, Fred. <sighs> Jump on the sacks to bridge the gaps. Okay. Yeah, if anybody finds out any more information about the special weapons in this game and where they come into play, let me know. Okay, so that's what you've got to do. I've just got to be quicker. Come on, Sack. Thanks, Fred.
No, that's not a ledge. Hmm. Oh, so close, so close. Well, fully charging, like, this is what happens when you fully charge your weapon. So I guess that, that kills you if you're not, if you don't have infinite lives. But it also kills everything else on the screen. What? <laughs> Thanks, Bill. Yeah, this is, uh, Amiga Ireland 2020. Uh, it was a sight to behold on Saturday, watching everybody roll in in their Amigos shirts. Team Amigos was representing loud and proud in Athlone this year. You got to get over there sometime, Bill. I'm not going to be able to go next year. They need more American representation, and you could do you could do some real awesome, shoot some real awesome footage too. How do I get? It seems like this should be a place where I can go. It seems like a shoot I should be able to fall down. Um, I'm standing and I'm holding down the button and nothing is happening. I don't think this rope does anything. Okay. So maybe... Wow, that's insane that you have to do that. Okay, so maybe I just need to, well, that's disappointing. So now we know where we need to go. Oh, wouldn't it be great if this was the thing we needed? It's not. I do like the fact that even though these enemies are all mostly the same, at least the, the, the colors are different, you know, there's a different palette. Little things like that make a big difference. And the lion heart section again. That's a good question, Rushi. Fred, what is the point of the suicide bomb? Is this a, uh, a dead end? Man, brutal.
There's the tooth. Uh, I have not I have not bought it to be honest with you Bill uh, I thought the price was a little steep 20 bucks is a lot to pay for an indie game these days um, if it had been under 10 bucks it would have been an insta purchase but you enjoyed it See, it kind of reminded me of glob a little bit just by looking at the footage I don't know how I'm supposed to get out of here. This is the way I came. Do I have to get on this thing and then, oh shoot. Did you order it already, Rushi? I know that you're the king of the, the physical version. A pretty cool nickname. I'm the king of the physical version. I just came from here, didn't I? This is not the way out. You know, I know that everybody that that that, that codes these things really, really works hard. Um, and I'm not saying that they shouldn't be compensated, but you you kind of have to look at the market these days. And um, it's just it, it just seems like you know twenty bucks for a download. You can get a whole lot more game for twenty bucks than what Tiny Little Slug is. Um, I think ten bucks is is that that sweet spot, and fifteen if it if it's really something new and interesting. But that's just my opinion, you know, for whatever it's worth. Room bombs can only be used if you have the flying blade and fully charge it. Okay. Is there any way to know what kind of weapon I have, Fred? Thank you for that information, by the way. Okay, so I think we're finally ready to go to the, this is the last board of the first world. So you have to, what? You have to buy weapons, Fred? Am I missing out on these shops? Is there something I need to be doing here? That's a good looking contrast right there, the purple and the green. Oh boy, look at this, this guy. Look at that. Oh, I thought I beat him. Yeah, I've been trying to do that whenever I encounter an open door, Fred, and it's, for whatever reason, it's not letting me enter. Because there have been places where I'm like, I know that this is something.
Oh. These sections just remind me so I mean it is it's different than Lionheart, but that 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 particular enemy just sends that same sort of Lionheart vibe. I've got tons of coins. I'm ready to use them. I've been saving them all for a rainy day. I'm reading a uh, a book now called um, Bride's Head Revisited. It's by Evelyn Waugh. And uh, one of the characters is wearing a Leander tie. And I had to read it several times just to make sure it wasn't like lavender, but it, was, it said Leander tie. And I was like, how appropriate. I must leave you now, but remember is the letters ZXSP. So boy, that's a long way to go before your first password. I mean, that's a, that's that's an hour and fifteen minutes of play with, uh, you know, and that's with, and I've got infinite lives turned on. That's 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 pretty crazy. <laughs> the Amiga was huge. This novel is set in Oxford in like. Pre, uh, pre, or it's like post-war Oxford, so 1920s, uh, post-World War One. There were tons of Amiga fans back then. All right, this is a good place for me to take a quick break. I will be right back in two seconds. Oh, is it Pix? Yeah, I, I, it's one of those novels I'd always heard of. And uh, the Folio Society, which is a fantastic UK publisher, um, put out a, uh, a really nice version of it. Um, I'll paste it here in the chat. I'll also uh, advertise that we are streaming here. My wife is uh, teaching herself the recorder, and so I can hear her practicing upstairs. It makes me happy as a music teacher to hear people learning a new instrument. Here's that bride's head revisit. It's beautiful. Okay, and I'll go ahead and put this up on Facebook too. Alright, I think we're ready to keep going. Hopefully the music will change in the next world. Wouldn't that be great? I mean, there's seven mini worlds in that first land. Climb the rock face to the far east. Slay the dragon to gain entrance to the temple and retrieve the amulet. Okay. 
Oh, we do get different music. This is very Lionheart-ish. Look at that tree. That tree is right out of Lionheart. <laughs> Man, I hate getting killed by a snake tail. Give me a break. Can you not kill this thing? You have to hit its body? What in the world? It's just very low. I can turn it up a little bit. Is that better or is that too much? Let me know if that's too loud. It does look like a shadow of the beast tree, I agree. How's that? Is that better? I wonder if this is a one disc game. Can anybody check that for me? sure how to proceed. Three discs. Thanks, Pix. I like this song. I don't like this stage. Okay, so I guess I've got to do this. There's just a lot of unkillable things here, I guess. You just have to avoid. These guys are a lot harder to kill than they were, too. to kill that thing without getting hit, I think. I like this music. Oh, okay. Jeez. If I didn't have infinite lives, I would not have the patience to get very far in this game. There's a lot, a lot of cheap deaths here. A lot of cheap encounters with monsters. That would be something to behold, Rushi. surprised that Twitch doesn't have like custom GIF emotes. Oh, look at this thing. This is a Ringwraith right here, or a uh, Ringwraith Witch King transport device. Doesn't appear to be super, super mobile. He just kind of reaches out with his old snout. Snouts you to death.
Ah, jeez. Do the, is it just, I know this box is a weird size, right? Isn't it sort of, uh, all, it's not quite squarish, but almost. It's definitely not a rectangle. Oh, just a square, okay. Now this reminds me of Castlevania 2, when you get when you beat the uh, the boss and you retrieve a piece of Dracula's heart, you enter a room that looks like this, or a piece of Dracula's body, like his toe or whatever. You got these things hanging down. Actually, I think the. Come on, there's a. There it is. Oh, jeez, no. I was thinking maybe you have to activate it by jumping. Is it just like once every 10 seconds it comes up? Waiting. This part of things reminds me of um, Underworld, when you ride the bubbles up to the top and then you die. It's just like Underworld. we go. Ready to jump. No! Come on. All right, got the thing. I wonder if that was a shop right there. Oh, here we go again. You know what, I'm gonna use the save state right here. Hey Hermski, how's it going, man? Okay. So let's just take a big jump. Okay, that save state was unnecessary. <laughs> You know, just looking at the uh, the animation here, this is above and beyond so many platformers of the same era. Uh, you can see that his his tassel is moving. Uh, you know, his arms and everything. I mean, there's there's some thought that went into the animation of the main character, which is good. Well, I think this is going to take me back to. Can you kill this thing? Surely you should be able to, right? Nope, you just have to damage boost past it. Yeah, you're right, it is a, it's a, it's a slightly 3D walking gate. That's exactly how I'd put it. Oh, jeez.
This is where I just came from, isn't it? Yep. You're right, maybe I do need to bomb it, Pix. I didn't think about that. Good thinking. Jeez, go through the maze. Those are not the words I want to hear. Which Shadow of the Beast is it that starts you out in the wrong direction? I always want to explore the, uh, <laughs> the other direction after playing that. Yeah, this whole game is go through the maze to find the thing and escape through the door. Interesting enemies here. Ah. <laughs> One and two. <laughs> yeah, Shadow of the Beast. Three is not even a Shadow of the Beast game. It's a totally different deal. And it's also, you're right, the only one of them that's really a good game. Um, was Shadow of the Beast just real, or was three, were all three released on the Genesis, Rushi? Is that a shop? Nope. Or if it is, I don't know how to access it. Can I bomb it open? Is that a shop? Definitely stocking up on the coins. Three didn't make it. All three was only on the Amiga. Interesting. What year was three released? It's like 94? Or was it earlier than that? Ninety-two. Okay, so what? What is it? Uh, 89, 89, 91, 92. Is that the the release dates? Thanks, slight rip crew fusion. Oh, come on. Hmm. There we go.
Man, you can spend a light year waiting for your uh, ride to show back up. There we go. I will say that the automatic vertical travel in this game is of a scale not yet seen on the Amiga by me before. You ride those elevators like they're going out of style. Huh, interesting, uh, Amiga Bong. I have not played Chips Challenge before. But I have heard it mentioned here and there. Look at the animation on that bird. It's pretty good. And then again, it's like just barely not enough to make it to that next platform. It's so... I call that poor game design. Man, I also, these, these blind jumps are, is that a blind jump? Let's see. Yes, it is, because you cannot see where you're going until you take, take the, the step off there. I've played a couple, um, slight retrofusion. Uh, we're on uh, episode 244 this week of Amigos, so, and many of those episodes we've done multiple games on. Let's see. I'm just wondering what, where I should go. Hey, it's a shop. We made it, guys. We made it to the shop. Let's explore all our options. I'm wearing three hit point armor. I also have a training sword. So, this should make the game. But yeah, I want other things. What is this thing? What does that mean? Oh, okay. So you go up and down. Look at that. That's a crazy looking icon. It's like the, the eye of Sauron in a triangle makes you go up and down through the, through the things. Okay. Well, yes, I want that, of course. I've got plenty of rune bombs. I already bought the mage armor. Heck yeah, give me the lion blade. Let's see what I've got now. Got the six hit point armor. I also have the lion blade. Make sure there's, let's see, can I go up the other way? Yeah, okay, I've got everything I need. Okay, and you can change, charge the line blade. Oh, yeah, oh yeah. That's right, baby. It's on. I swear that's the first shop I've seen in this game, by the way. I've tried to go in every single open door that I've found. We'll go ahead and make a save state here. No, no. I just pressed escape.
I don't have the line blade anymore. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I hit the wrong button. Oh. Oh. I hit escape instead of F12. Where's my rewind feature? Where's my automatic saves? Oh my gosh. And of course I've lost all my coins. Well, things were going great until they became less cool. You know, I almost wonder gonna go back to my last save state because I, I, I gotta use those coins. I'm not gonna be able to beat this game unless I have all the most powerful stuff. I'm glad I made that save state when I did though. this thing. Nope. Okay, we're not too far away from where we need to be. That's cool. Oh, man, rain powers. Heck yeah. Oh, look at this thing. This guy's, he's my friend too, I think. Let's wait on my ride. Oh. All right, I'm not exactly sure what that was all about. Yeah, 
Is somebody with the manual, uh, anybody that, that wants to, I'd like to know what that thing was and uh, <laughs> if, it, if it was a good thing or a bad thing. It just seemed weird. All right, Bill, thanks for hanging out, man. Be safe out there. I figure you're just running to, running to play a set with your band real quick before you went to the store. Your Bowie cover band. I know you're in one. Secret's out. All right, we made it back. Give me the lion blade, please. We shall save correctly. Okay. Okay, so every time every time you die, your weapon gets downrated by one. I'm guessing that this is the uh man, that seems like a lot of money to spend on a on a single life. Yeah, and then before you know it, you're back down to nothing again. I wonder if it's like you're buying the upgrade path. Do you think that could be it? Anybody that's still listening? Um, they, when you when you buy the, the, the sword itself, you're buying the ability to upgrade to that sword. where I'm supposed to end. Yeah, no 
hit detection once again. Because spending 3,000 bucks on that ultimate lion sword seems really crazy when it goes away when you die. Oh my gosh, what is... Oh, okay. Let's try this now. So, F8 to pause. And then... Um, F7 to select various super weapon. F8 again. Oh, it's the hidden entrance. Bam. That seems like you should be able to go in there. Oh wow, that's a crazy looking thing. Again, the vertical travel. Impressive. Oh, I didn't even see that thing. It blended so well into the background. Oh, man. Oh, so you've got to you've got to catch the fairy on the way down for this thing. No, got to catch. How do you? Let's see. Yeah, this is the way out. Hmm. Weird. Well, I think we're gonna we're gonna stop the Leander fun uh, for right now. Uh, it's about lunchtime, so time to get some food, but. I appreciate you guys for hanging out with me. Uh, people that are still left in the chat. Um, it's been a fun couple hours playing Leander. I plan on streaming at least once per day um, while I'm out of in isolation here. Um, and uh, we'll be doing something different next time. I think we might try out The Hobbit for the ZX Spectrum. So uh, I will see you guys uh, later on. Yeah, I'm sure there is platform moving down here. Oh, no, there's no platform moving down there. Yeah, it's going up and down, but it doesn't move all the way down to where you need to go, Mega Bond. That's the problem. See, it goes up and back up. So, I don't know how you beat it, and uh, this seems like a good place to stop. So, uh, check out more things coming soon. We'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. See you, Ill Hess.